Welcome to lesson 13 of Learn C. Uh, in this, we're going to not do any math. We're going to actually work on characters uh, and strings. So we're actually going to do some letter manipulation here. Uh, the reason that it's kind of a side topic, and there's actually, in lesson 14, there's actually a punchline to this whole uh, string character manipulation stuff uh, that's actually going to become apparent why, we, why this um, series of lessons matters. Um, but it's worth saying that um, uh, many, many things are written in C. C is the backbone of much of modern computing. To wit, the guts behind the operating systems of Windows, Mac, and Linux, the kernel, as they say, is all written in C. The, 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 the actual operating system itself is all written in a version of C somehow, usually Objective C or some other type of C. So C is really the backbone of all these operating systems, and mostly operating systems run off of text-based commands, type something out. And so C is very, very good at interpreting strings, not just numbers. And it's actually, it's one of its uh, most powerful features. So that's why C has a lot of ability to manage uh, character strings. And so let's do a character string uh, program here. new project um, because we're doing strings we need to add a new header include String.h. We'll be using some new functions, and those functions don't exist in the normal C. Not very, very few function exists in the normal C libraries, standard live and standard IO. That's these two libraries here. And so we need to add string.h to be able to use these string characters. Then we need to declare a, a type of variable car character. I want it to be over an array alpha be obvious why I'm going to do that in a minute. Make it 50 large just as for secure for um, a little buffer there, just in case I need it more than uh, the 26 characters in the alphabet. And I also need some integers: integer i, int j, and int n for this little example. The first string command that we're going to do, we're going to do string copy. Into alpha, I want to I want to insert a string. I'm going to insert QWERTY. The, every character in the alphabet is arranged on the keyboard. Q U E R T Y. Just to copy the keyboard, the QWERTY keyboard, onto there. This is a sorting. Uh, what, the, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sort this string. I'm going to alphabetize the string so that A is first, B is second, and so on. That's the end result. Of, that's what the end result of this program is going to be. But first, let's see if that thing worked. I'm going to print F um, before sorting, and then percent S, and then alpha. S is a, is a, a string of indeterminate length. Um, okay, that's a really short program. Let's let's compile and run it. Before sorting, it just comes back there. So a couple things about string copy is string copy will copy the entirety of this string in. So alpha has to be larger than this string plus one because there's always a terminating character that says this is the end of the string. So it always has to be bigger than one. So I could have said 27 here because that would have been just big enough. I put 50 just, um, and by the way, this is just, uh, an example of modern waste is because we have so much memory on these modern machines. So I waste 23 characters uh, um, in an array, who cares, right? Um, 
it's um, it's it's really a sad state of affairs. When I was when I first started turning on computers in 1979, um, we had 4K of memory and had to really really manage and make sure memory was very very carefully conserved on all sorts of programs. And now you know there's just gigs and gigs and gigs of RAM on every machine, so it's not um, so it's not a real problem. An another another um, command. Oh, and by the way, if I want to know what st string copy is, I go string copy and C. And my favorite um, reference for um, functions in C is C++.com. So it tells you string copy. It tells you what it does. It gives you an example of how to use it. And then on the side here, string.h, it tells you all the different functions that are in string.h. So the next one we're going to use is string length, str length, which returns the string length. And so you can see um, how it says string, you know, how to use uh, string length, or strlen. So I'm going to say n equals string length of alpha. Now it's not going to say 20, it's not going to say 50, it's going to say how many characters is this, 26, I think it's going to say. Check it. Right? Yeah, 26 characters. It doesn't include that don't null character, the 27th character in string length. Only the character, only the non-null or the non-terminating characters. Okay. So now what I want to do is sort. I want to sort this string to alphabetize it. First, an important detail, and that is that um, characters are stored as numbers. So the character is really the character arrays in def C. I declared this as a character. It's really integers. So there's just 50 integer values. But there's a conversion process that goes in that. So it's stored, so it stores integers, but then represents them as characters. It's called the ASCII character set. So here's the number, the integer number, right, that corresponds to a certain type of character. Null happens to be zero. We're starting at one, and these are all, bell is seven, so if you want to print out um, uh, zero, seven, it goes bing, like that, all these characters thing. Then we get to 65, 65 is A, 66 is capital B, 67 is capital C, you get over here. 97 is lowercase a, 98 is lowercase b, 99 is lowercase c. So in the ASCII character set, a is less than b is less than c. And capital letters are less than lowercase letters. If you want to switch to all caps, just, sub just subtract um, 32. All right? So that's pretty cool. Um, that's the ASCII character set. I just Google ASCII character set. Uh, this came from uh, an image. I just got an image of it. It's nice and colorful. So, so that's the. So we're going to run a test of, of, um, of. We're going to uh, test. We run a, a sort algorithm that's going to sort these things, and it's called a bubble sort. It's two nested for loops. Four i equals zero. I less than n minus one. Go to the next to the last character. I plus plus. For j equals i, j less than n, j plus plus. If alpha sub i is greater than alpha sub j, then swap them. This sorting algorithm. It's really, it's, it's a very, very brute force sorting algorithm um, strategy. Um, so in order to do an, in order to do it, I need a temporary variable. Now in class, I do, I show you three hands. I borrow one of the student's hands. And the idea of swap is you need a third variable because no values. So the the analogy is that 
the three hands are the three um, variable names, alpha sub i, alpha sub j, and then you need this new variable temp. Third hand, and you have two coins. You have one coin in alpha sub a and one coin in alpha sub j, and you need to swap those coins. But only one hand can have one coin in it at one time, and, um, uh, and the coin can never hit the ground. So what happens is you have to move one of the coins to temp, Move one of the coins from your left hand to your right. Move, move, move the coin from your right hand to temp. Move the coin from your left hand to your right hand, and then move the coin from the third hand temp back to the left hand. And so that's how you do a swap in programming. Temp equals alpha sub i alpha sub i equals alpha j alpha j equals temp so i'm looking at all these square curly braces and they all match you can see the red up at the top matching the red at the bottom that's a nice little feature of fc Let's see if it works So before it was QWERTY, after it's ABCD, it worked. How about that? Um, there's no way that a sophomore in biomedical engineering is going to know, uh, is going to de novo be able to come up with this sorting algorithm. That, those kinds of things are, you know, um, uh, take a lot of years to sort of be sophisticated enough to come up with some kind of new idea for sorting algorithms. By the way, most sorting algorithms have been resolved. There's all sorts of different choices and you just pick one. So, so th that's not the main point. The main point is not to get you to be innovative enough to come up with this sorting algorithm, but to understand how it works. And the way to understand how it works is in the middle here, is right before inside inside this this nested for loop you can print out what i is what j is and then what and what the string is every time and you can actually watch it sort i mean it's going to print out a gazillion lines but it's going to be really really uh, you're going to see how it works and what you might want to do is you might just want to do it on a smaller scale so um let's do that let's just say F E C D B A, right? That's just for percent D, percent D, percent S. Right? So inside, we did just, we're just doing six here, and let's see how that looks, right? So when I is zero and J is zero, F is uh, um, um, uh, uh, nothing changes. F is the lowest character, but when I is J and F is one, A sub J, Alpha sub J, E, is less than alpha sub I, and therefore it switches, right? And then um, the next time we compare zero, the, the zeroth one and the second one, on this case, E and C, so E is less than C, so then they switch. And then we have uh, three, when we have zero and one, two, three, so D is greater than C, so it doesn't switch, doesn't switch. Zero and four, zero, one, two, three, four, B, B is less than C, so it switches to B, and then by the time we get to five, the last one here, A, is the A, um, A got in the first column. Then you go to the second column, that's F, and so you do that, and eventually, if you look, B gets into the second column, 
uh, by the end of the ones here, and C gets into the third column by the end of the twos, and in, and D gets into the third column by the ends of the threes, and uh, E gets into the fourth column by the end of the fours, and F is last. So that's how that sort it works, if you can see it. So that's the um, that's the um, a sorting algorithm, and that's lesson 13. Now, this is not really, I mean, yes, learning how to sort is good, but actually there's a detail in here that I'm actually going to bring up in, next time in lesson 14. That's uh, a, a, actually a bigger topic. Next time.